Corporations don't have to lobby the government anymore. They are the government, says political activist Jim Hightower. You all should listen to me today because the electoral lobbying affects every single one of us and often acts not in the best interest of the population. You can trust me because I've been invested in politics since, politics since I was a kid. And while that might be a little weird, I do know what I'm talking about and I've read and researched the topic quite thoroughly. Now with the knowledge that I've accumulated throughout my entire life and in the past couple of weeks, I've come to the conclusion that while lobbying is constitutional, it actively, certain forms of it actively corrupt and delegitimize the democratic processes within our government. First, I'll explain what lobbying is and why it is bad. Second, I'll explain its origins and why it probably won't be going anywhere anytime soon and what we as Ameri and then finally, what we as Americans can do about it. So what is lobbying and why is it bad? According to the National Conference of State Legislatures, states generally define lobbying as an attempt to influence government action through either written or oral communication. The lobbying that I'm focusing on today is electoral lobbying, which is the act of supporting a politician through either through funding, the supporting politicians campaign or office through funding, which is money, and with the intent to influence new legislation or the outcome of a vote. Basically, the lobbyist is paying a politician to support laws that are gonna help the lobbyists and not the people. And for example, in uh, New York, a Democratic congressman by the name of Charles Schumer received over $700,000 in funding in the 2022 election cycle. Most of these uh, contributions came from lobbying firms and organizations looking to sway his actions to help their own personal agenda. This is, this obvious, this is a, this statistic displays the immense, the, the insane amount of money that's being funneled into the lobbying industry and why it poses such a risk to the integrity of government officials. In 2019, an investigation in Wisconsin revealed that there were over 10,000 instances of this happening and where bills were being drafted or influenced by special interests of lobbyists. If there is just one, in one year, one investigation in one state revealing over 10,000 of these occurrences, it's easy to imagine what the problem is like around the entire country and how it's very ingrained and is a very big problem in the United States. So now that I've explained what lobbying is and why it is bad and poses a risk to the dem democracy in this country, I'll explain how it started and why it has increased. So the common belief is that the term lobbying came around during the Civil War when Ulysses S. Grant was mobbed by a bunch of political activists in the lobby of the Willard Hotel. This is actually untrue, and the term actually came around during the 1640s in the lobbies of British Parliament in England. And the right to lobby is protected by both the First Amendment in the United States and the Lobby Disclosure Act of 1995, making it very difficult to pass any regulation regarding it. This is meant to protect the right for Americans to participate in an open and democratic environment. And the fact, despite the good intention behind this, the cause for lobbying also asks for it as a barrier to making the problem better and reducing the influence that lobbying has in the government. The fact that it's protected by a constitutional amendment makes it extremely difficult to pass any new legislation aimed to reduce the power and influence that lobbying has in the government atmosphere. And on top of this, legislation surrounding lobbying is passed by the very government officials that are directly funded by lobbyists. So it's illogical to expect any change to come from these politicians if they're being paid by the lobbyists. Because if the lobbyists are paying the politicians, the politicians are gonna make lobbying less powerful because their lobbyists are gonna stop paying those politicians and they don't wanna lose that money. So now I've explained how it started and why it's ingrained in by the politicians into our government and why it won't go away. I'll explain how we as Americans can come together to make the problem better. We can all participate in something called grassroots lobbying, which is a different form of lobbying. According to lobbyit.com, grassroots lobbying involves a mass mobilization of the public around a legislative issue, whether it's getting a certain poison ban or posing harsher penalties for drunk drivers. So essentially, it's just Americans coming together in mass, in big groups and numbers, either in person or online, to bring about political change. We can apply this to the problem of lobbying by getting together and calling for the Department of Justice or other investigative organizations to basically show the spotlight on the illegal activities conducted by politicians and by a lobbying firms that lobbying firms that try to bribe these officials. Uh, an example of this is that in 2006, a Washington, Washington DC lobbyist named Jack Abramoff pled guilty to bribing government officials and forcing, and this forced officials to either be more careful about receiving funding or being associated with lobbyists at all. 
So basically, the fact that this guy pled guilty to it and got into a lot of trouble, lobbyists are going to be forced to be more honest and more trustworthy, and politicians are also going to have to make decision to take funding and money from people that are going to be trustworthy and aren't going to try to bribe them or pay them a lot more money than they should be paying them to get their agendas pushed. And now I'm going to ask all of you to take action. So the first, I have two links here, and I'm going to ask you to take out your phones and put in these two links. The first link is a YouTube video, a five-minute YouTube video, and it has great visuals and just reinforces what I've said today, and it just demonstrates the enormity of the problem in this country and, and how it's been around for a long time and won't go away unless we do something about it. The second link here is a the, uh, link to the contact page to the Department of Justice where you can email or call and voice your concerns about local politics or just any questions you have about law regarding politics in the country and just and like lobbying, for instance. But a cool thing you can do is also on this website, find a career page. And if you're interested in a career in the Department of Justice or law and want to make a difference as, your, as yourself, as an individual, you can check that out too. So with my experience and my research in politics and lobbying throughout my entire life, I've come to the conclusion that while it is lawful and constitutional, lobbying poses a great risk to the demo democracy in this country, and that us as Americans can do something about it, and we should, as it is our duty as Americans and citizens of this country to do so. First, I explain what lobbying is exactly, and why it is vital, or why it is bad for this country, and poses a threat to our democracy. Second, where it came from, and why it is just rooted, deep, deeply rooted in politics. And then finally, what we as Americans can do about it through the use of grassroots lobbying. It is important to remember this today, what I've said today, because it affects every single one of us. It has affects, affected generations past and will affect future generations if we do not do something about it now as Americans and come together. Thank you.